You are welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. We are expecting something tonight. If you believe that when the heavens opened, everything will shower on you. Why are you there? It's coming your way. Father, in Jesus' name, we honor you, we glorify you, we exalt you, and we know that here today, you'll pour your blessing upon everyone in Jesus' name. In our heart, in our soul, in our body, in our family, on our children, on our young people, on fathers and mothers, on the adults, everywhere here and over there, everywhere, shower your blessings upon people in Jesus' name. Transformational salvation. Definite healing. A definite deliverance from every attack, every affliction of demons and evil spirits. Blessings all around. Lord, we pray you grant everyone tonight in Jesus' name that none will go empty handed. Everyone, everyone, everyone will receive from your hand in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. And somebody shout, Amen, before you sit down. The glory of the Lord will shine upon your life. We thank the Lord who has brought us together again today. On the fifth day of this global crusade here in Ondo City, Ondo State, Nigeria. And it's getting to different parts of the world. Congregations are everywhere, online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere. People are cooked up. And they are listening, just like you are listening. And I want to proclaim to you that there will be blessings, miracles galore here tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone online, stay there. Stay connected. Power is coming your way. Tonight, we come to Hebrews, reading from chapter 6, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. Wherein God will him more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability, the unchangeableness, and the steadfastness of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. And then in verse 18, it says that by two immutable things, unchangeable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fledged for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. There's hope for you. There's help for you. There's healing up for you. There's deliverance for you. It's set before you. And as you come and you stretch forth your hand of faith tonight, it will come in your life. And then in verse 19, it says, which hope we have. Not that we're going to have that hope, the hope in the Lord that he will do what he has promised. The hope in the Lord that he will accomplish in our lives. What he has proclaimed, he says we have hope of the soul. An anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. 
which entereth into that within the veil. And then he tells us in verse 20, it says, with the forerunner, that's our Christ, that's our Lord, that's our Savior, that's our healer, that's our redeemer, that is our deliverer. The forerunner is for us, for me. For me, he has entered, even Jesus made and high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All those verses I read to you. Let me summarize the truthful promises of the unlimited God. Mighty, powerful, unlimited, the truthful promises of the unlimited God. As you know that God is unlimited. It's unlimited in granting salvation. Unlimited in granting healing. Unlimited in granting deliverance. Unlimited in doing creative wonders in our lives. And tonight, a creative wonder in your life manifestation of his power unlimited power in your life in Jesus name the truthful promises he gives us promises and those promises are true those promises as you believe them as you accept them embrace them they are verifiable in your life he comes in your life and he makes a performance. Everything he has said, everything he has declared, the promises that are truthful and is coming from the unlimited God. There are three things we're looking at tonight as usual. Number one, the unfailing promise of salvation for all. Are you there? Salvation is coming to you. Unfailing, the unfailing promise of salvation for all. Number two, the unlimited promise of healing for all. That means because it's unlimited, no matter how terrible that sickness is, how long standing that sickness is, and how almost incurable that sickness is and no matter where that sickness has driven you to there is healing for you tonight see there's healing for me tonight the unlimited promise of healing for all everyone virtually number three is the unceasing promise that is a kind of promise there that does not stop it does not cease. It does not come to an end. Unceasing promise of solution for all. Solution for every problem of your life. Every heartache in your life. Any time that has become so prevalent. And it, it's like it's become the second nature. And you're trying to see how to manage your life with that problem. Tonight, there's no management. The power of the Lord will come upon you. He will take away that problem and give you solution tonight in Jesus' name. One, the unfailing promise of salvation. Two, the unlimited promise of healing. Three, the unceasing promise of solution and everything for all. Maybe I should say it directly, everything for you. Yeah. I will see. I will get my own. Because it is for all. Look at number one. Number one is the unfailing promise of salvation for all look at ezekiel chapter 25 and we're reading from verse th uh, chapter 36 verse 25 ezekiel 36 reading from verse 25 it says then i will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Now, 
when the Lord makes a promise, we need to understand the promise. And we need to come expecting the fulfillment of that promise. Uh, when somebody goes to school, and I'm asking, uh, what do you want in school? He said, I have a challenge, the challenge of ignorance. And I'm going to school so that that ignorance will be taken away. The same thing. You come to the Lord, you have a challenge, you have a problem, and he wants to take that challenge away. You, you go to a restaurant, and then you sit down. They said, what are you looking for? I have the problem of hunger, and I came here to solve that problem of hunger. Anytime you come to the Lord, we, we cannot just say, okay, I want blessing, I want blessing. What blessing do you want? And here God himself said, he's solving the problem of our filthiness. It says, then will I speak, O clean water, upon you, and ye shall be clean. We learn something from there. If you come in dirty, if you come in defiled, if you come in soiled, and then you go back home as dirty as you came, you, you went back as defiled as you came, then he has not cleansed you. You didn't present yourself for the cleansing. He says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. It's not talking of water from River Jordan. He is God talking. And God does not go to River Jordan. He does not go to the Red Sea. He does not go to, you know, any other local river here. And then he says, I'm going to sprinkle that local water on you. It's talking of the water from heaven. It's talking about the word. The revelation that he gave, that he gave for salvation. He says, I will sprinkle upon you the clean water, and ye shall be clean. You'll be clean in Jesus' name. And then he makes it very clear what he wants to do. And we need to emphasize that, that when you come to the Lord, he says, from all your filthiness, all your filthiness, will I cleanse you. What's that? All the fleshly sins. The sins will commit with the flesh. The fleshly sin, you know them, that makes us defiled and dirty. And you are even ashamed after you've committed that fleshly sin. And if you are an unmarried person, you are a single man, single woman, a bachelor's minister, when you go to commit the sin of the flesh, you feel the guilt, you feel the shame, and the Lord the saying, while that shame and defilement remains, you cannot live with him. You cannot get to heaven with that guilt, condemnation of the flesh sin. That's why he said, but I want you in heaven. And the only condition is, you're welcome. And that shame you'll bring before me, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness. If you're a married man, you're a married woman, there's also the sin of the flesh that you carry your flesh, you carry your body to a person that is not your wife, that is not your husband, and then you mess up your life. And if you're a religious man, you're religious and dirty. You're religious and defiled. And the shame and the condemnation is there. But the Lord says, in that condition, in that situation, there is no way you can get to heaven. The highest bishop in the country might come to your burial and say good, good things about you. You pay your deals and you pay this and you pay that. And all the people in town become, it's a good man. It's a nice man, of course. That's what they think because they don't follow you to where you mess up your life. And God says, if you're going to be with him and spend eternity with him in glory in heaven, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean 
from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Today, it will cleanse you. Because if that cleansing does not happen, if the hand of the Lord does not come and blot away all your sin, all your evil, all the shameful things you have done in the secret and in the public, if the cleansing does not come, if you die dirty, die defiled, die filthy, there's no way you can spend a minute in heaven because that heaven is holy and God is holy and all the angels of God there are holy. And it's only when that cleansing has happened, when that turning around has happened, that's when you'll be fit for heaven. I will be fit for heaven. I said I will be fit for heaven. Now, I don't understand why anybody will have the offer of the salvation of the Lord and the fellow will not take that offer and he's satisfied to be religious and he's satisfied to be traditional and he's satisfied to be a good man, a good woman, a popular man, a popular woman in coach. You must have the cleansing that he has promised. And then he said, from all your idols, any idol worship that you participate in, any kind of object you have, your reverence and you pay homage to, any kind of thing you do to replace God, that's idolatry in the sight of God. And he wants to cleanse you from all your idols. And after he has cleansed you, all those uh, bad, evil things, all the idols, you collect them together, you burn them, and the Lord will know that you rest in him and in him alone. And salvation will be yours. Amen. Amen. And the Lord himself by his own power, by his own hand, his cleansing hand, it will cleanse you. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it says, I will also save you from your uncleannesses. Uncleannesses. There are people, they make themselves unclean by what they watch. It used to be, you know, we used to say, if you're watching television, you're watching, uh, you know, devil's uh, box. And we used to say that all those things will pollute your life and defile your life. But now, how can we be saying that? Because it's on every phone. And once you have your phone and you have data there, you can roam about all over the world. And then you can have all those evil things defiling your body and defiling your flesh. And the Lord says, I know what you are doing. And I know what you have done. But come. And the Lord says, I will also save you from all your uncleannesses. And I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no more famine upon you. Yeah. I, I thought there would be a great undo. Amen. Yeah. And then it is for all. It is for all. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 53, reading there from verse 4. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Why? He became your substitute. Every evil thing you did that will bring punishment upon your life, Christ said, I'll bear their punishment. Lord, I know you want to smite and strike all those people that have defiled themselves in the world, but I will go and I will bear the striking, I will bear the smiting, I'll be afflicted on their behalf. That's why he says in verse 5, in verse 5 he says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace, of your peace, of my peace, was upon him, and with his stripes, somebody there tell me, we are 
healed. He heals our soul. He heals our spirit. He heals our body. He takes the condemnation. And it takes the suffering, eternal suffering of our sins. It takes everything. If we look at verse 6, it says in verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The salvation is for all. It's for you. Yeah. I said it's for you. Yeah. I learned of a woman. True story. This one is not just a made-up story. Uh, she had done something for a rich man before. And then the rich man deposited a large amount of money in the bank for her. And the uh, certificate that shows that that money belonged to her was issued. And they gave her, the bank gave her that certificate. The money was in the bank. And he could live happily, joyfully for the rest of her life. But he fra she framed the certificate and put it on, uh, on the wall of the house. And she didn't know the value. And the circuit was there. And uh, actually, uh, Mr. Spurgeon, uh, C.H. Spurgeon, went to visit her because she was a member of her church and saw a certificate at the wall and said, hey, Madam, what is a kitchen? Oh, you say, <laughs> you know, one man that I worked with and I worked for uh, many years ago, when he was going to die, he gave me something, and that's what's on the wall there. And the uh, Spurgeon said, can I bring it down and look at it? And, uh, you know, she said, yes. Uh, can I take it home and study it? And said, no problem, but bring it back. And the uh, Spurgeon saw that, a large amount of money, thousands, thousands, thousands of pounds a sterling had been deposited for her in the bank. But she didn't enjoy any penny of that. And Spurgeon went to the bank and saw the officers there and said, uh, can you help me with this certificate? Oh, they said, we've been expecting the woman. Well, is she still alive? The money was there for her. And she was living in penury, living in want, because she didn't go to claim the amount that had been left for her. I tell you that story to tell you this. Your salvation has been settled in heaven for a long time. Forgiveness settled for in heaven for a long time. And the Lord has given us the evidence, the certificate here in the Bible. And then you close the Bible and you put it on the table and you dust the Bible and you cherish the Bible. But that's your certificate that shows you that salvation is available for everyone. Now you will claim that salvation today. Anybody there? Salvation. Somebody help me shout salvation. salvation. Forgiveness, cleansing, redemption. And it's all available for every one of us as you repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, your salvation is confirmed in Jesus' name. Let's come to number two here. Number two here. We're looking at the unlimited promise of healing for all. Unlimited promise of healing for how many people? For who tonight? I said for who tonight? It will heal you. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus Chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, 
I will put none of these diseases upon thee which have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am, I am, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He didn't say, I'm the Lord that healed you in the past, ancient time. There are people that tell us, yes, they said, hey, Jesus healed many years ago. Uh -uh, this one, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He didn't say, in the millennium, when Christ comes, and he establishes the perfect millennial kingdom. At that time in the future, I will heal the insect. No, today, when is your healing? When is your deliverance? When is your miracle? It says today, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And he said, the sicknesses you see in the world, you hear about in the world. That's what it says when it said, and I will not bring upon you the sicknesses and diseases you have had about in Egypt. All those sicknesses of the world will not be for you. They will not be for me. I said they will not be for me. They will not be for you. And if any of those sicknesses, if they are in your life tonight, it will set you free. He will set me free. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 8. Reading from verse 7. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. You understand that Jesus is everywhere present. He himself said so. He said, where well, two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them, myself and yourself too. Even if it's only the two of us, but now we have three, Four, one thousand and many thousands there and as we come together and we mention his name he will heal you because he says I will come and heal him look at verse 16 in verse 16 when the even evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all. Mark that in your Bible and healed all. Notice that in your Bible and healed all that were sick. All, all, all. Are you included there? Once will take you away from those who get the healing. It's no more all. All means everyone, every sick person, every diseased person, everyone that has any part of the body malfunctioning. It says he healed all that was sick. Why? Look at verse 17. In verse 17, that age might be fulfilled. The, the healing of the sick is the fulfillment of the prophecy that God had given to his prophet. It's not because I do this, I get the formula how to pray. It's not formula. I get the way with the, I will stretch out my hand and get the healing. No, it's not any formula. It's because this healing it's in fulfillment of the word of the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 24. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 24, who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, on the cross that we, 
being dead to cease, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. I didn't hear your amen there. Yeah. By whose stripes, by whose wounds, by whose suffering, by whose substitutionary sacrifice, we are healed and ye were healed. Your healing is here today. And the Lord will bring it in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10, reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. That's the Trinity there, God, God the Father. Anointed Jesus, that God the Son, with the Holy Ghost, that God, the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, they show interest in your healing. They show interest and performance in your deliverance. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and what power somebody shout power there power. if you know that power is going to touch you and remove and take away all your sicknesses shout power, power. he anointed him of the holy ghost and what power who went about doing good he'll come to you there he'll touch you there he will roll the problem of your life away right there in jesus name he went about doing good and healing how many people? Oh. Tell me, tell me. Oh. Are you part of that all? Yes. He went about, he never said no to anyone. He never said, ah, your sickness is complicated. And your sickness, this looks terminal. And this looks unsolvable. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And God says, I am God, I change not. That healing is still available today. And it said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And that healing will be yours in Jesus' name. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Is God still healing today? Yes. Will he heal you today? Yes. you understand? This crusade has been going on now from place to place and every time we pray, Every time, every solitary time, we pray that the sick should be healed. The Lord has always stretched out his hand and he has healed the sick. And tonight, we are going to pray again. And your case will be dealt with tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, let me show you people, other people that have got it just like you, just like you. Say, just like me. Okay, to save time, I just mentioned the name Deborah from Abuja. She will tell you herself what God did for her and then will transfer that to you and the Lord will do it for you. Yeah. Deborah, thank you. You can tell us. lives that have been touched through your global crusade i was diagnosed of ovarian cyst um the beginning of june and i was having excruciating pains it was so severe and i've been i've been having these pains for the past four years my name is tavita leo deborah is my daughter we have been going to hospitals and she has been experiencing this for four years you know, from hospital to, and while she's in school, it has always been, you know, it has been pains all through. So I attended this global crusade, the supernatural deliverance, and Daddy was showing us so many testimonies of people who were sick, 
testimonies that were even greater problems that were even greater than mine and i believe that it was me because he said i was next i believed it i got it on tuesday i got it perfectly when the, we went for the scan again the doctors said it was it, it was they cannot believe it it was it you know it was beyond what we told them that uh, we, it was a uh, ovariances we told them it was ovariances but when they checked they said that was there was nothing in it so this indeed is a miracle i'm fine by the grace of god i am okay thank you daddy very much amen you'll be okay tonight i I will be okay tonight. Uh, uh, let me bring another person. His name is Hope. He'll tell you the story by himself. And whatever story you hear of healing, of deliverance, will be multiplied in your life. Hope, thank you. Talk to us. My name is Hope Sylvester Nyax. After three days of having my second son, I started developing pains around my nerves. And it was so severe, number of days, when these pains come on me, I would be so tormented. I was going for, looking for a way out, but my God was faithful to stand by me. The pains were severe, and we were suffering the entire family. Because anytime the problems happen, we'll be suffering here and there. And you know, for 14 days, she has been in this great torment. Thank God for Global Crusade. At the one at Abuja, despite connection. Indeed, God actually connected me, and God showed me his mercy. During the, the period, our final law was asking us to lay our hands on where we have challenges. I believe God and laid my hand on the naval area. God, in his mercy, passed through the prayer of a man of God and healed me. Before then, the pain was so severe, I placed my hand on it. I believed God for a miracle. As the man of God said, a final amen, the pain disappeared. Today, I am happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the man of God said, the final amen, Everything was finalized. And tonight, as we pray, I will mention that name of Jesus that will never fail. And then I say amen. You say amen. The angels say amen. Heaven says amen. Earth says amen. That thing must go. Because we are told how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and is still going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and God is still with him. And his name has not lost any power. Number three now. Number three, we come to the unceasing promise of solution for all. Maybe your own problem is not sickness or disease. But it's a serious problem. It's a serious predicament. And you want solution. Whatever the nature of the problem, solution has come today Amen. for you Amen. in your family Amen. in your finance Amen. in your profession Amen. in the work of your hand Amen. in anything that concerns you solution has come tonight in Jesus name Amen. look at this unceasing promise of solution for all. Isaiah chapter 65, reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. And it shall come to pass in my life. 
and it shall come to pass here tonight that before they call I will answer before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear that's it it said while we still pray before you even open your eyes and before you check up anything it says while they are yet speaking I will hear and that is an unceasing promise for everyone Matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 7 Matthew 7 verse 7 ask and it shall be given you no exception everyone no partiality with God ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you is that yours will he solve your problem tonight really really will he hear your prayer tonight look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened amen in your life confirmation in your life that whatever the problem is he'll bring that solution tonight to the problem in jesus name Look at verse 11. Verse 11, it says, If ye then, being evil, ordinary people, like others, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more readily, how much more willingly, how much more immediately shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. He will do it. John chapter 14. We're reading from verse 12. John 14. Reading from verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Anybody believing on the Lord Jesus here tonight? Look at that. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And then in verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, whatsoever, that's the solution to every problem. Whatsoever, anything that bothers you, anything that aches you, anything that troubles you, it says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at verse 14. If, she, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that promise of God is unceasing. That promise of God is unstoppable. That promise of God is still valid in your life today. That if ye shall ask anything in my name, he will do it. First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. Tonight you have confidence. You know that tonight salvation is coming your way. Healing is coming your way. And solution to every problem is coming your way. You have that confidence. Well, I'm talking about you. Do you have the confidence tonight? I said you have confidence tonight. You will not go back home empty-handed. 
And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that were desired of him. I have the petition. I have the solution. I have the answer that I'm demanding, expecting, desiring from the Lord. He will save your soul today. He will heal all your sicknesses today. And he will bring solution to every problem of your life tonight in Jesus' name. He's ready to do it now. He's going to do it now. Anyone ready there? He will do it for you. I'm so confident tonight he will answer your prayer. It's bowed and eyes closed. He wants to save you. He wants to cleanse you from all your filthiness, all the sins of the flesh, all the defilement and the dirt of evil deeds in your life. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to convert you. He wants to save you tonight. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want that cleansing, understand, without the cleansing, you cannot get to heaven. No dirt, no defilement will be in heaven with the almighty God. And so, you want to get to heaven and you want him to cleanse you. You want him to turn everything around in your life and to say now, I've cleansed you, I've forgiven you, you are clean. Anyway you are, raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I want that cleansing to be done by you for me directly. Raise up your hand. He's coming to do it now. And he will remove the guilt and the condemnation of that defilement. Of that filthiness, of that dirty lifestyle in your life. Raise up that hand. And if you're raising up your hand, I'm going to pray for you now, but you stand up as I pray for you. Raise up the hand and stand up online. You can do that too. Over the radio, you can do that too. You're connected with us. Over the television, you can do that too. Raise up the hand and stand up. And from the depth of your heart, you say, Lord, I want this cleansing, this conversion, this salvation. Raise up that hand and stand up as we pray together. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, I don't want to continue in that kind of life. This defilement, I don't want to continue. This uh, filthiness, I don't want to continue. And this dirty life, I don't want to continue. I want you this moment to come, cleanse me, and free me from all my sin. Keep on standing and praying with you now. Father, we thank you because you are faithful God. Whatever you said you will do, we know you will do. And these seekers, after your cleansing, after the conversion, after the forgiveness, after the power that sets free, after your salvation that they are seeking now, they raise up their hands, they're standing up, they're saying, Oh Lord, do it for us, do it for everyone now in Jesus' name. You said, All, all, everywhere, anywhere that will call on the name of the Lord, you said, The salvation, the forgiveness will come to them. 
effect that, perform that, and give them that salvation and that cleansing now in Jesus' name. Take all the guilt away. Take all the condemnation away. And take all the shame of defilement away from their heart, from their soul, from their spirit, from their life in Jesus' name. Confirm that salvation by the whisper of the spirit right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. It is done. You are cleansed. You are forgiven. And you are saved. Good, good. Amen. Amen. Our counselors are there. They'll attend to you now. Briefly, make sure that they get to you. And then after that, I'll come back and pray for everybody that needs healing, that needs solution in their lives. I call on a pastor to do that for us now. Counselors, let's move into the midst of the people. All who are standing up, raising up their hands, identify them immediately. And let's take the necessary information. Let's remain standing. Those who have decided for Christ, remain standing. If you are not attended to, beckon to the counselor nearest to you that you are deciding for Christ. Let's take all the data right, boldly, and in a legible way. Let's keep on standing. Counselor, please, let's move to the back. Don't concentrate on one place. If you have not got somebody to counsel, move to the back. There are people standing, waiting for somebody to attend to them. Let's get to the extreme left hand side attend to those who are standing up there don't sit down until you are captured until you have attended to That form will help the people of God to continue to pray for you and help you to continue in the Lord. So it's very important you fill that form. They are passing across to you. Give the correct information. Your name, your address, your phone number. Counselors, check the digits, make sure it's 11. Let's work smartly, do it smartly. Once you finish with somebody, move to the next person. And as you finish, ensure you submit. 
the form to the supervisors in your own unit. We must not keep the forms in our Bible. Make sure you submit to the supervisor. Once your own session finish, we can move to the next session and assist the people there. Instead of just standing, Supervisors, when you are true, please, you begin to wave your flag so that we know that that session is true. Others, continue to meditate and prepare yourself. for the miracle prayer tonight. And all those who are deciding to, and don't forget, tomorrow, 3 o'clock, a special luncheon with Christ is awaiting you. Join those who have been coming and enjoy the benefit of connection with Christ. Supervisors, if you are finished, wave your flag. Let us know that you are finished. On, the, on my stream, right hand at the back, let us move there and ensure that all who are standing have been attended to. On my left hand side, if you are finished, wave your flag. Let me see you. Supervisors. In the middle. Okay. At the back, on the right-hand side, supervisors there, let's wave our flag, wave the continuously so I will see you. All who have decided tonight to give the letter to Christ, and all who have decided from the first day, to second day, third day, fourth day, and today, tomorrow, a great luncheon is already packaged for you. Make sure you are there in the hall behind us there. It's going to be great. Now let's rise up. Our friends online who are connecting with Christ, please, on the social media, let's fill the forms. And then the WhatsApp phone numbers, you can text your information to each. Please, let's rise up. 
Praise the Lord. You remember that Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24? You know it says, and it shall come to pass. That before they call, I will answer. Your prayers are answered tonight. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. It's done. Where are you? You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand where you have the problem. And the Lord is bringing healing, deliverance, solution to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We know that you love everyone. And you want to solve the problem of everyone. We have this confidence that your promise will be fulfilled right now. We're asking, Lord, that everyone having their request, as we present them before you now, touch them, heal them, deliver them in Jesus' name. Healing for all. Healing for everyone. And Lord, I pray as they identify where they have the problem and now they come to you, I pray that your healing hands will touch everyone. All things called disease or sickness or infirmity, touch them now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Anything that is called problem. Lord, I pray that you touch them and bring solution. Solution for every problem. Deliverance from every bondage. Healing from every sickness. Confirm. Affirm. Perform. In every life right now. According to your promise. That while we are yet speaking. You will answer. And before we finalize the prayer. That you have done it already. Let there be manifestation in every life. Miracle everywhere. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Thank you Lord. We have this confidence, it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has done it. For me, the Lord has done it. Check it up. Your healing, your miracle, your deliverance is there already.